Good morning. Welcome. As unfortunately, it's with a great deal of sadness, I have to welcome you this morning because I don't know, I, I would hope that by now you're aware that Patrick's mother, Helen Starkey, passed away late Friday evening. Um, <clears throat> the message went out by way of the church uh, prayer chain, and I'm not quite sure who all in this audience may or congregation this morning received that. I know most of you did, but I'm questioning whether. So I ask that you be in prayer for Patrick and his family. Patrick will not be in the office or working again this coming week for obvious reasons. And again, one of his things that I think we especially need to offer prayer for now is <coughs> the family as they deal with uh, his dad's illness and dementia and uh, managing that. Again, that's something, unfortunately, many of you are familiar with and um, special prayers there for, for the Patrick family. Also, in terms of, of course, we always have the, the regular prayer concerns scrolling uh, on the monitors, but another one that's unknown probably, Gladys Houston, friends of Rick, good friends of Rick and of Rick, of Rita, excuse me, both of you, uh, and Sam that has worshiped with us for the last couple or so more years. You know, she has cancer and had to return to North Carolina. Well, her son here in Roanoke, Brad, passed away suddenly this week. He'd been ill, but his death at this particular time was sudden, so we need to be in prayer for the, her, that family too. So um, I don't think there's anything else I can add to that, is there, Rita? Other than that, I, that I'm aware of, um, everything is known and passed along. From that standpoint too, uh, the deacon body is willing to offer assistance too if you're needing it that we can assist with, which I'm not quite sure off the top of my head who all our deacons are. Uh, I know uh, Lillian and I and Rick and Donna, Walter and Barb, and, uh, we, we're kind of, and Bobby and Dennis, I think y'all are, uh, Bobby and Dennis, Bobby and Becky, y'all are still deacons if I remember correctly. So please don't hesitate to call on deacons. I think you know how to get in touch with us or if not through the office. Now, I would like to welcome Naomi Powers this morning as our speaker. Naomi and her husband Tom are co-pastors at Daleville. Naomi is also moderator-elect for the district, uh, Verlina District. So she has a, a larger capacity beyond just here. But we do welcome you and very much appreciate because Patrick had talked to Naomi and Tom when this first began and they were quite willing to assist us, and we do deeply appreciate it. With that, would you please rise as you're able and join in the call to worship. You'll see there's leader men and women separated there. God calls the church to prayer. Prayer opens our hearts to God. Prayer, prayer ushers us into God's presence. God calls the church to prayer. Prayer reminds us of our weakness. Prayer connects us to God's strength. God calls the church to pray. Prayer reorients us to our source. Prayer invites us to humility and obedience. With one voice and heart, we lift our prayers to God. And then the line there of coming in praise. And with that, if you'll join me in a unison prayer. We praise you with joyful music, our God, because you are the source of life itself and of every blessing. Accept our praise this day for our sake, O God. For if we cannot or will not declare our gratitude, we draw in upon ourselves and our spirits wither. Wellspring of the joy of living, as cold, sweet water drawn from the earth quenches our thirst, may the outpouring of your grace refresh our souls 
and teach us how to love each other just as you love us. I'm forward. Woo. I'll hold this a little bit differently. Good morning. Hello. Well, today we're going to talk about prayer. Do you know how to pray? Okay. Now, when I was growing up, we learned how to pray by folding our hands and sitting very quietly, and also by just putting our hands together, okay? But a long time ago, 600, in the year 600-something, there was a monk who, uh, well, first of all, there, the prayers were done by crossing your arms across your chest. Can you do that? Okay. And that would tell them that God is wrapping 
his soul around you and protecting you and also gives you an opportunity to talk with God. There was a monk back then who was playing around with some dough. And the dough that kind of makes bread, not the dough you put in the bank. But that he was messing around with some dough and had some extra, and he put it in the shape of this. And it came up to be what we call now a pretzel. So, um, and it was called a prezizio. He gave it to the children when they learned their prayers and could say their prayers so that they could be reminded all the time that they can say their prayers at any time. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do today is talk about prayer and how we talk to God today. There's a lot of different ways people pray. But I want you to be reminded that God is always with you. Shall we pray? God, thank you for all you have given us and the fact that we can talk directly to you in our prayers. Remind us that we are wrapped in your love. Amen. M's in there, and the M and M's stand for my moments with God. M and M, my moments with God. Thank you. pray this morning. After each petition, I will lead you in the first line of that hymn. 
Lord, listen to your children praying. Please join me at that time. Let us pray. O oh God, of amazing grace and miraculous power, you are worthy of our praise. We have seen your mighty works in the world and in our lives, and we are grateful. We sing praises and songs of thanksgiving, and yet, like the disciples who witnessed the feeding of the multitudes, but were afraid when they saw Jesus walking on the sea. Our faith can be shaky and doubting. Lord, listen to your children praying. We confess that we do give our lives over to the transforming of the power of your spirit. We would touch the world with goodness, but too often we withdraw in anxiety and self-interest. We would warm the lives of others with our love, but we hesitate, wondering if they will love us in return. We would go about our daily tasks with confidence and joy, but find ourselves struggle, struggling with self-doubt. We need your presence, O oh God, if we are to be what we could be and want to be. Lord, listen to your children praying. Come to us anew in your word and among those gathered around us here. Hear each of us in our silent prayers and in the concerns shared this day. Provide special comfort to the family of Helen Starkey whom you have reached out your hand to bring her into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, listen to your children praying. Renew your church with vision, excitement, and commitment to serve you. Save your world from pettiness, hatred, poverty, injustice, and wars. Bring your Holy Spirit as you did at Pentecost. Let our worship heal us, recreate us, and strengthen us that we may go out in joy and be led forth in your peace. Amen. This is a song from my youth, which is a long time ago. <laughs> and uh, we'll invite you to join together the third time we come around to the chorus. Uh, we'll see. Well, hi, Laura, you're here, hi. <laughs> Under God's wings, I am safely abiding. Though the night deepens and tempests are wild, still I can trust God. I know God will keep me. God has redeemed me, and I am God's child. Under God's wings, under God's wings, who from God's love can sever? Under God's wings our soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under God's wings, what a refuge in sorrow, how the hard yearningly turns to God's rest. Often when earth has no balm for my healing, there I find comfort and there I am blessed. Under 
God's wings, under God's wings, who from God's love can sever. Under God's wings, my soul shall abide, safely abide forever. Under God's wings, oh what precious enjoyment, there will I hide till life's trials are o'er. Sheltered, protected, no evil can harm me. Resting in Jesus, I'm safe evermore. Now you get a chance. Under God's wings, under God's wings, who from His love can sever. Under God's wings, our soul shall abide, safely abide forever. We'll work on the joining in next time. <laughs>Observation from setting up here. It's obvious several of you didn't know it uh, and had learned it somewhere along the line. I mentioned at the beginning, I think I said how well we communicate. I failed to communicate one thing. We, as you know, have not taken up a formal offering here for, since we did COVID. It was put into the bulletin and I meant to, I should have. I didn't mean to, I should have told Ann that rather than the offertory, Walter was going to make a little presentation to update us on where we are on our Raise the Roof campaign. It's, you've been very generous to this point, and we hope that generosity continues, but we do think you need a little bit of an update. Michael, you did tell me that, but I forgot. Well, <laughs> the only thing that's a problem is we're being broadcast live, in case you didn't know it. <laughs> Okay, so, so Michael's covered the subject. I'm uh, just here for a pretty face. Um, it's, this is just a, a reminder. We have our goal of $65,000 up here, and we're at eleven or 12193 So we're almost at 20%. Thank you. Uh, that's a, a wonderful start but it means we've got about 80% to go. So um, if you picture our roof, 20% uh, helps. We need to get the other 80% done. People have been very generous. People are being recurring givers, donors, and we appreciate that. And so if it is a one-time gift or something that uh, works for you to give uh, repeatedly, that's wonderful. Any way you can do it, you may put it into the offering box out there. If it's a check, be sure you write roof on it. Uh, Dave can handle that. Uh, there are envelopes that have raised the roof written on it if you want to be sure or you want to donate cash, that would keep it separated. So please continue your giving. Thank you. Uh, and I'll let Michael pick up from there. <clears throat> when Walter said there's another pretty face up here, I was afraid he's going to hold the poster up in front of him so we wouldn't see him. <laughs> well, with that time, maybe we need to rethink our prayer time and how we approach it. The scripture this morning is from Luke 11, 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He, he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, 
Suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given. You search and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Thank you, Naomi. First of all, it's really important to let you know that there will be uh, treat bags for each of you at the, at the door as you leave, too. So that will help your prayer life and maybe the stomach rolling that might be occurring. Luke and Matthew both, uh, and they're the only two Gospels that have the information about Jesus teaching his disciples to pray. Luke is kind of a shortened version, and Matthew extends that, extends that. We all have learned the Lord's Prayer over the years, and I know for me, it's a comfort that I know those words, and I can come back to those words at any time that I want. What are some of those prayers that you learned from your childhood, and you can just shout those out. This is where I want to hear something from you. What are some of, like, the bedtime prayers? Yep, yeah, that's, that's a number one, I think. That's a number one. Anybody have anything different? I know for me, it was also just reciting the 23rd Psalm before we went to bed. How about table graces? God is great, God is good. Johnny Appleseed. Oh, Johnny Appleseed, okay. Singing is most important in prayer. Anything else? Be present at our table, Lord, is one that I remember, and that's one that was sung when we had a whole group of people together. Or in my family, we learned, come Lord Jesus, be our guest and let these gifts to us be blessed. And at the end of the meal, it was, thank you, Jesus, for this food. So there was a prayer at the beginning and at the end. Everyone prays just a little bit differently and at many levels. Sometimes praying those prayers that we know by heart is a good way to jumpstart our prayer life. They bring comfort, and familiarity. Even though we say those same come Lord Jesus at every meal, it is a comfort to us, as, we, as a comfort to me, as I go forward and remember that there is a place at the table for Jesus. I have an example of a, a prayer that encompasses something somebody learned in the past. It's from the movie Sister Act from 1992. I'm aging myself. Just as they're about to eat lunch, Sister Mary Patrick says, on behalf of all the sisters here at St. Catherine's, I'd like to offer a great big hi there and hello to Sister Mary Clarence. Hi, and as part of the welcome, I thought that maybe our new sister could offer today's blessing. At which time, Mary Clarence responded with, 
Oh, that is very thoughtful of you, Mary Patrick, but really, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that, uh, sure. Let's see, fudge. Uh, okay, bless us, O Lord, for these thy gifts which we're about to receive. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of no food, I will fear no hunger. We want you to give us this day our daily bread and to the republic for which it stands and by the power invested in me, I pronounce us ready to eat. Amen. <laughs> and they responded with a hearty amen and accepted that. How many of us are tongue-tied like that when we're asked to pray on the spot? For a group or even when we are by ourselves. We search for those right words. It's not just newcomers or people at the edge of faith who need such help. One long-serving pastor admits that for him, praying is one of the hardest parts of Christian life. And he's not referring to public praying in worship or even private prayers with his parishioner, but to personal prayers, those that Jesus referred to when he said, but whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. This pastor writes, my own experience of praying is fraught with problems of a wandering mind, sleepiness, itchiness to get on with the demands of the day, the boredom of praying about the same topics over and over, and philosophical questions about praying itself, such as, if God knows what's in my heart, then why do I have to tell him? And why should I have to pray about the same things day after day, especially since I don't repeat myself to other people about subjects? I know I can get that way too. It's hard to center our minds and focus when we pray. There are much more times I'm comfortable singing my way into prayers. The words and music of hymns and other songs get me jump started in a thoughtful, prayerful mode. I appreciate the song that you brought forward today. That would be one that I can add to my collection. What are the songs that speak to your heart and ready you to pray? Again, real answers. Think about songs. For me, how great thou art. I need thee every hour. Change my heart, O oh God. Sweet hour of prayer. Sanctuary. Think about those. What are some of those? Yeah, again, you can. Stay silent if you like. Um, and are there places, special places, that bring you closer to God when you pray? Anybody? Camp Bethel. Camp Bethel. The outdoors. My goodness, that just, it, it just wants to have you pray. It's waiting for those prayers. In the sanctuary, sometimes I go over to church just to be in the sanctuary to pray. It reminds me of the cloud of witnesses that are usually sitting there. In your garden as you're working, send up those prayers. Prayer is more than a technique, but a means for nurturing relationship with God. In Luke, the disciples were asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. 
They had seen Jesus pray and how intent his prayers were. They wanted to have that connection. However, just as with the disciples, we sometimes need help to begin nurturing that habit. The Lord's Prayer is one of the, the most used prayers, and we learned probably at an early age. Sometimes it can just be something that we've said for years, and it's just words. But it is now comfortable to recite. But the meaning sometimes has waned. On the other hand, if we truly tune in as we pray the Lord's Prayer, it is not the end, but the beginning of our life in and with Christ. It's helpful to think about prayer in the context of spiritual gifts, a favorite topic of the Apostle Paul. In more than one place in his letters, Paul talks about the different Christians having different gifts, talents, and abilities that can be put to work for the church. Paul lists such things as the gift of prophecy, serving, teaching, preaching, giving aid, acts of mercy, discernment, and others. And he says that they are given in different measures to different people. I suspect that the same is true about praying. Some people have the gift to be prayer warriors, and some people don't. Nonetheless, whether we're good at prayer or not, we benefit in daily life from the making the effort. And the Lord's Prayer is a place to start. The words of our prayers are not as important as the act of praying. It's the communication tool between you and God. It's merely a conversation with God. Jesus said, when you pray, say this. He did not say that God would not listen to you unless you said every word exactly right. Instead, as you pray to our Father, speak as if to a member of your family by calling God Father, a term of intimacy and familiarity. Then Jesus suggests that we make three requests, one for bread, one for forgiveness, and deliverance. And then that we trust in God to give what is needed. Intimacy, trust, and expectancy are what Jesus advises his disciples and us to adopt as we pray. There's one caveat, that prayers are consistent with the words, your kingdom come, and the, the requests need to agree with the intentions of the Lord. We speak to God by the manner in which we live. One couple in their book, Primary Speech, A Psychology of Prayer, note that prayer starts without words and often ends without words. In any case, it's up to us to preserve this life-giving language of prayer. Within this community of faith, we are challenged to create a healthy habitat for prayer, one in which we are not afraid to ask for the gifts we need for physical and spiritual health, one in which we search diligently for the will of God among the many competing agendas of contemporary life, one in which we knock again and again on the door to God's kingdom. Knock persistently through discipled, disciplined, disciplined, I can't speak, disciplined daily prayer. Knock faithfully and forcefully with the full conviction that our Lord loves us and wants us to meet and wants to meet our needs. In the Luke passage especially, it is apparent that God encourages us to pray and then assures that he will listen and will answer us 
For if we human parents know how to give good gifts to our children, then how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? There are some acronyms out there that may be helpful in your prayer life as well. These are not found in the Bible, but have been produced to assist in nurturing prayers. The easiest format that I know to remember different types of prayer is the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. It also helps me to think about prayer as an action that furthers our relationship with God. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. When we think about adoration, it's praise, glory, adoring, greatness, glory, awesomeness. And then there's confession, repentance, asking for forgiveness, and promises to do things differently. Thanksgiving, grateful for all that God has done for us and others we know in this world. And then supplication. We tend to use this one a lot in the church, and that is prayers on behalf of others. That is very important because our prayers, even though they go to God, are really a congregational prayer. Even though it's us individually, we pray, pray for the whole community of God. Another aid to prayer sometimes reminds us to pray unceasingly, and that is push. Pray until something happens, because it will happen. Maybe not in our time. We need to push. We need to keep praying. When everything goes wrong, just push. When the job gets you down, just push. When people don't react the way you think they should, push. When your money is gone and the bills are due, push. When people just don't understand you, push. I can always return to the prayer that he taught us. Please pray with me as I sing his prayer.
let us continue in that attitude of prayer. I'm going to let you reflect after each sentence that I read. In all ways, commit your task to God's guidance. In every moment, receive God's peace. In all seasons, trust that God is at work. In the midst of difficulties, let hope in God see you through. In times of despair, deepen your prayer. At all times, let your praise flow. You are people of prayer. Go from this place as God's holy and beloved children. Sure, that your prayers are always heard and answered according to the eternal plan and purposes of God. Amen. What joy and peace it brings to know that we have a friend in Jesus who is always listening. Let's sing together. Let us stand as we're able and raise our voices as we sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <laughs>
Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way. May he go behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, within you to give you peace. Amen. Go in his peace.